Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad podcast with Chris Finn, a production of P4S Golf. Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad podcast. My name is Chris Finn. I'm your host, and today is going to be a fast, quick-hitting uh, little narrative on this myth that has driven me crazy for years, but uh, actually just had somebody come in uh, this, uh, actually yesterday, um, and so I wanted to I wanted to talk about this because um, you know there are a lot of particularly with the baby boomer generation you know in, in joint replacements <laughs> that is a common thing that happens uh, you know in that time of life you know 50s 60s 70s you know, our joints you know have gone through life they've worn down there's some genetic uh, obviously con- contributing factors as well that lead to the point of needing a knee replacement or a hip replacement or a shoulder replacement and there are so many fallacies when it comes to what is the right thing to do pre-surgery and post-surgery and how do I get back to playing golf? So for the golfer who has to have a joint replacement, the number one biggest fallacy is that you, your orthopedic surgeon will say, yep, we'll see your surgery and they won't say anything else. That's the thing. They'll just say, here's your surgery date. See you then. They don't recommend going to start to, you know, do prehab is what it's called, pre-rehabilitation or pre-operative rehabilitation, right? So you basically go to a physical therapist um, to start to get stronger in the areas that you need to, to, it's very well documented. The the better shape you're in going into surgery, the shorter your recovery will be. I don't know why people don't share this information with every single person that walks into an orthopedic office. They need to, they should, It, it should be a crime not to. But if you are a golfer, and you are going to go get a joint replacement, you need to go see somebody uh, at the very least who just a a general health practitioner, like a physical therapist who can get you stronger just in general for that surgery. Ideally as a golfer, you should be going to somebody who understands the golf swing so they can get you stronger in the ways that are going to get you back to the golf course quicker, right? The only thing that really matters in life, right? As a golfer, is there anything else that really matters? Who cares about walking and all that other stuff? Just get me on the golf course. I obviously say that in jest. Walking is pretty important, especially on the golf course. <laughs> but you should be looking at, like, if you're going to get a shoulder replacement, and you should be going to, if you come to us, for example, as a someone who's looking at you as a golfer, we're going to look at your your hips. Are your hips good? Are you, you know, are, are, is your trunk turn good? Like everything else other than that shoulder, we know coming out of surgery, there's going to be specific rehab necessary for it to, re, to you know, for that shoulder to to get it moving better. But if your hips and everything else are great coming out of, you know, right when you get out of surgery already, that means you're going to get back to playing faster. Because if your hips suck, your spine sucks, your neck sucks, you can't rotate in any of those areas, and your shoulder's going to suck because you're coming out of surgery and you got to rehab that. If those other areas are no good, there's going to be additional stress placed on the shoulder, right? And the same goes for a knee and for a hip, right? If you're getting your knee replaced and your hip sucks or your shoulder sucks, there's going to be more stress placed on that joint. So... There, we, we talk about this all the time, the four main rotary centers, the shoulders and the hips are the two big ones. Those are joints that move, in, you know, not just forward, backwards. They also move sideways and around. They twist, they turn, they move every direction, right? 360 degrees. If those joints have issues, other joints have to pick up the slack. And when you're getting a joint replaced, you get your knee replaced, for example, the actual physical joint, you know, the, where the bones used to be, they cut them off and they put in, you know, basically, you know, metal or plastic, you know, depending on what type of material you're getting used. Right. And all of a sudden that joint, there's no friction between there, that joint anymore. Like that joint should be fine. That joint in isolation, but the joints are only designed to, you know, the knee joint, for example, is only, only designed to go, you know, up and down kick your foot out, bring your, you know, bring your foot back. It's, it's, it moves one way, right? Not designed really to go any other ways. Your hips are actually designed, you know, six, you know, six degrees of motion, right? Forward, back, side, side, and around. Same thing with your shoulder. So when you get the joint replaced, the joint itself is better than it ever be. It should be, you paid, you know, you're paying five figures for it, right? (laughs) You would expect that joint to be freaking better than it was when, when you went into surgery. So when people come out, the second biggest fallacy is that I had my joint replaced. Therefore I, I, you know, it's not, not going to be the same. Well, well, no, shoot, it should be better. Right. But when you get your, your hip replaced or your your shoulder replaced or your, your knee replaced, the actual joint itself is better, right? Where you're going to need to put the work in is on the tissue around the joint. So the rotator cuff in and around the shoulder, the, you know, the hip musculature in and around the hip, you know, the quads, the hamstrings, the calf, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the dorsiflexors all around the knee. 
they likely, those muscles likely have not been functioning correctly for however long your knee or your, your, your hip or your shoulder, the joint that you're having replaced, you know, ankle, <laughs> right? The muscles around that joint have not been functioning properly for probably years if you, by the time you get to the point of getting a joint replacement. So to think that you can like just go in, get the joint replaced, come out and be good to go in you know, 12 weeks without having to do anything other than basic rehab is kind of silly, particularly when you think of the golf swing for a healthy person. <laughs> How, you know, nine out of nine plus 10, nine, nine or basically more than nine people out of every 10 fail the rotary centers. Now you're going and getting a joint replacement. Like you, you probably 10 out of 10 are going to fail one of the rotary centers. I can pretty much bet my house on that for you. So going to preoperative rehab, working on all the other joints, obviously you're going to do some work on the joint that's going to get, you know, repaired. If you're getting your hip done. You're going to work on, you know, trying to get the musculature and the hips as, as kind of active and as strong as possible going into that uh, surgical procedure. If it's your knee, you're going to work on your quads and your hamstring and trying not to co-contract the quad and hamstring, right? Trying to be able to, to isolate those two, the quad, the, the calf muscle. If it's your shoulder, you're looking at the different rotator cuff muscles and, and you know, how much strength do you have at different areas of length, you know, areas of motion. When we start talking about the golf swing, that's where you start to layer in. How well do I rotate in these other areas? Let's work on those. So that way, when we get out of surgery, we have as minimal stress as possible on the joint that was just surgically repaired. Um, you know, when we go to actually start swinging the golf club, um, you know, so I, I think that to me is probably the biggest fallacy. Then coming out, the one that really grinds my gears is you get out, you, you do, you know, the hip 12, 12 weeks that the surgeon tells you, yeah, you'll be back playing golf 12 weeks, you know, knee maybe four, six months. They don't actually understand that when you go back to playing the game of golf, if you've had your hip replaced, the mechanics of how you used to function because you were in pain need to be trained out the other way. You actually need to learn how to actually drive force through the ground, right? There's been studies done on golfers pre and post operatively and not shockingly, the ground force has changed a bit <laughs> after surgery, right? Whether it's because of pain, whether it's because you can't activate mus musculature in the correct way. So going into that preoperative rehab actually helps you come out ahead of schedule in terms of your, you are ahead for the return to function that you care about, which is golf and you're just higher level of function, not just what the insurance companies care about, which is can you walk 300 feet and be, you know, count, you know, accounted as technically quote unquote, you know, community ambulator. Can you be 150 feet and be counted as quote unquote independent home ambulator, right? 300 walking, 300 feet. You know, like that's like, who cares? Like that's a hundred yards. That's, you know, that doesn't even get you to the par three green, right? Right. So you have to be able to go above and beyond. Unfortunately, the insurance world doesn't care about getting you back to playing your golf game. Therefore, how they're going to reimburse and how they're incentivizing the medical professionals leaves you in this kind of gray area of your, your good quote unquote to be discharged from an insurance based process, but you're not necessarily ready to get back to the golf course because that is a much higher level of requirement. You know, the insurance company, if you get your hip replaced, isn't going to pay for the therapist to document that they're working on your shoulder external rotation and your trail arm to take stress off of the lead hip that was just replaced <laughs> so that you can get through the golf ball correctly. And that's where you need to be smarter than the system and understand what you need. And that's where prehab can kind of get you started down that path post, uh, post surgical intervention. That's where you need to, you know, definitely look for a therapist around you who understands the golf game and throughout the entirety of your process can be giving you things to do other than if you're just there for the knee, let's say, or that you can obviously rehab the knee and get that knee replacement going the way you need to go, but also give you stuff to work on the shoulders and the hip, like the rest of your body's fine. Like there's no reason why we can't use this rehabilitation time to also do things that are going to help you when it's time to go back to swinging a golf club and you've been cleared by the orthopedic surgeon to do those sorts of things. So the two big pet peeves, literally, these are probably the two biggest pet peeves I have when it comes to, um, you know, joint replacements. Number one, just to, to recap here is the, the, the belief that if you don't go to preoperative rehab, it's fine. That's not okay. It actually makes your post-surgical experience longer, less pleasant. It decreases the chances of, an, of a quick and speedy recovery back to life and also to golf, which is, <laughs> is a golf podcast. We care about getting back to golf. And that is, you know, for a avid golfer, that is probably worse than not being able to walk is not being able to play golf, right? Now, the second piece, so that number one, everybody, please, if you're having a joint replacement coming up, Find somebody that you can go see before that. I don't care if the orthopedic surgeon says you don't need to do anything. Screw them. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> go When it comes to rehab, go find somebody prior to that and go get prehab so that you can go into that surgical room 
as in as best shape as possible. That's going to ensure your recovery is as quick as possible, right? The second one that I have is this idea that when you come out of surgery, you don't need to do anything specific for golf and that we're okay. If you just do the basic insurance protocol, we have to understand like the insurance protocol is built to spend the least amount of money on you possible. (laughs) They are incentivized to get you out of there as quick as possible. So their goals for discharge as a therapist, if I write in there that we are working on your trail right hip and you're there for a left shoulder replacement, I am not as the therapist going to get paid because I'm not allowed to treat a different body part in that session. That's how screwed up the insurance model is. So it is not the therapist's fault that they're functioning within the model. They can only work on that joint that you're there for. Okay. Unless they get creative with their documentation and they just say they're increasing activities as tolerated, right? That's a a fancy way to say we're doing other things, but the insurance will let me do it. You have to make sure you have the conversation with the provider who's rehabbing you. If they can't do it, if they can direct you to somebody who can, maybe they can direct you to somebody who you can pay cash for. You can kind of work around and outside the insurance world who can get you ready to get back to play the game of golf. There are so many people that we see who get back to playing golf because they're discharged from their knee replacement in six months. They're discharged from their hip replacement at 12 weeks. Um, who are just not ready to play the game of golf. And then now they're frustrated because now their golf swing sucks. They have all these, these different compensations that they never had before because the rehab was not geared to making them strong in the right areas and mobile in the right areas to help them accomplish a successful return to the game of golf. So if you are getting your joint replaced or you have had your joint replaced and you did not do prehab and you did not do golf specific return to sport, please, I implore you, like you are not crazy. Like you, you are normal that you need those things in order to get back. It's not an outlier that you need them. Most people, if they say they didn't do that and they're fine, they're lying. I can, I can attest to that because they show up in my door. Um, So hopefully that helps you guys kind of bust a a pretty big myth around joint replacements and the need for, you know, what you need to do to get back to playing the game of golf. How do you, what do you need to do to prepare for a surgery so you can get back to playing and living as a, you know, at hopefully a higher level, higher higher level than pre-surgery. Um, that's, you know, you wouldn't go get the surgery if you were fine. Right. So hopefully that all helps. Um, hopefully guys, uh, you know, hopefully we diffused a few, uh, ticking time bombs here. I helped some of you that are maybe have surgeries coming up or maybe have had a joint replacement and weren't sure you kind of thought something was wrong. If you didn't do one, you know, the golf specific post rehab or the pre rehab, that's, that's going to be the reason why you're not exactly where you want to be. So, Hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you picked up a few nuggets and uh, appreciate you tuning in, spending the time. Uh, you know, love these short episodes, kind of give you a, a quick hitter. And uh, we'll look forward to hopefully dropping some more bombs for you on the next episode.